let us discuss about scales in fishes in this presentation so we will be discussing about the importance of scales different types of scales and why the importance or the significance is very very unique in the classification all these things we will be discussing in this presentation so let us move on to the presentation and we'll discuss about the scales scales in fishes are very small rigid plate that grows out of the skin of a fish the skin of most fishes are covered with these protective scales which can also provide effective camouflage so camouflage in the sense it is going to protect the fishes or any organism through the use of reflection and coloration as well as the possible hydrodynamic advantages so the term scale was derived from the old french word a scale meaning a shell pod or husk which means the outermost covering which is going to give the protection that we call a shell pod or a husk scales vary enormously in size shape structure and extent and ranging from strong and rigid armor plates will be like a armor plate in some fishes and in some organisms they are very microscopic in nature and in some organisms they may be absent also like eels angler fishes they are absent completely absent the morphology of a scale can be used to identify the species of fish from which it got originated so it is very important in the phylogeny also so fish scales are the part of fish integumentary system so like our integumentary system dermis epidermis and other things are there in the integumentary system the same way fishes integumentary system has the scales as a part and are produced from the mesoderm layer of the dermis which is entirely different or distinguished from the reptile scales reptiles also have the scales but fish scales are entirely different so the genes which are involved in the formation of tooth and hair in mammals are also involved in the scale development in fishes the placoid scales of cartilaginous fishes that is the placoderms are also called as dermal denticles and are structurally very very similar or homologous with the vertebrate teeth hence it has been suggested that the scales of bony fishes are similar in structure to the teeth but sometimes probably might have originated from different tissue not from the same tissue from which the teeth has been originated so let us see about the different types of scales so we have different types of scales like uh, placoid scales placoid scales are the first one primitive scales which was found in the placoderms and then comes the cosmoid scales cosmoid scales are there then ganoid scales are there and then rigid rigid scales they are very very uh, rigid and uh, how to say in a very uh, rough texture which gives rough texture to the skin those two types of scales are called as cycloid and tenoid type of scales so in this image you can see the placoderms so these are the placoid scales which are found in the placoderms which has the teeth like appearance so that only we call this as dermal denticles and next comes the cosmoid scales and this cosmoid type of scales are found in lung fishes and most of the extinct fishes possess this cosmoid scales so this is giving an armor like texture we said no different types of uh, scale structures are there one might be rigid armor like plate like and some will be microscopic and in some they are absent so this cosmoid gives a hard shield like or armor like structure and next comes the ganoid scales which are very uh, different in uh, shape like rhomboid and the other two are cycloid and tenoid scales which will be giving mostly a circular uh, form or concentric ring like structure so these are the different types of scales which we are going to see in the present session so what is this placoid scales placoid scales are found in the cartilaginous fishes like sharks rays etc and they are pointed tooth shaped structure and hence called as dermal denticles this also we spoke already they have teeth like structure because of that only they are called as dermal denticles so here i have uh, shown the dorsal view and the ventral view of the placoid scales of scoliodon sorcova scoliodon sorcova is the scientific name for the sharks 
so here you can see the teeth like structure we will be having the similar structure and this is the root region which is getting inserted in the gums of the organism no so this gives the structure so as we as we discussed so here also we can see the dermal denticles which has the central pulp cavity so as we said that it is denticle or teeth like structure you can also see the pulp cavity so this is the pulp cavity which is present in the dermal denticle supplied with a rich blood vessels surrounded by a conical layer of dentine so these are the conical layer of dentine which are found in the denticles and which sits on the top of the rectangular basal plate so this is the rectangular or rhomboidal basal plate inside which the placoid scales are resting and this rest this plate is being inserted in the dermis dermal region okay and the outermost layer is composed of vitrodentine a largely inorganic enamel like substance so these are the uh, structure which is present dermal denticle like structure and it is having central pulp cavity conical layer of dentine is there and the outermost layer is made up of vitrodentine so that is the inorganic enamel like substance placoid scales cannot grow in size but instead more scales are added as the fish grows in size or when it is getting increased in size the amount of scale coverage is much less in ray fishes when compared to that of the sharks we said that placoid scales are found in the sharks and rays whereas here the number of scales or the amount of scales will be more in sharks when compared to that of the rays because of this scales the fish integumentary system gives a sandpaper like like appearance that is it gives a rough texture to the skin of the fishes okay similarly scales can also be found under the head of the denticle denticle herring and next we move on to the cosmoid scales a plate like or armor or shield like scales and this cosmoid scales are very very common to the lung fishes which belongs to the family ceratodidae and some fossil fishes most of the fishes are extinct and some are fossil and very common to the lung fishes and this is very very similar to that of the placoid scales and probably might have evolved from the fusion of placoid scale as this cosmoid scale is very next to the placoid scales they might have evolved from the placoid this also have two basal layers of bony layer one is called as dentine like cosmoid as the scales are called as cosmoid it is made up of a substance called as cosmoid and the outermost layer which is very similar to that of placoid even in the placoid scales also the outermost layer is vitrodentine and here also the outermost layer is vitrodentine and the scales become larger as they grow okay see here this is the structure and this is the epidermal layer of the fish and here you can see the cosmoid cosmoid is the uh, innermost layer and inner to that they have the vascular spongy bone and next serves the isopodine and here also they have the pulp cavity okay so this is found in the extinct crabs of the regions and the scales become larger as fishes grow and new one is added to the basal layers whereas in the placoid scales new ones are not added and here new ones are added next we move on to the ganoid scales ganoid scales are found in sturgeons paddle fishes bow fins and bichirs they are also derived from cosmo scales and often have serrated edges their edges will be very very a uh, rough or sharp or serrated and they are covered with a layer of hard enamel like dentine in the place of cosmoin as cosmoin is there it is called as cosmoid scales and here it is entirely different and they have a layer of inorganic bone salt which is called as ganoin in the place of vitrodentine so here you have to understand in the outermost layer vitrodentine only you have the ganoin 
whereas there it is in the innermost layer and the outermost layer is almost the same in placoid as well as in cosmoid which we call as the vitrodentine whereas here it is replaced by ganoin and ganoin is a characteristic component of ganoid scales it is a glassy often multi layered mineralized tissue so see it is the uh, structure or the shape of the ganoid scales they are multi layered and mineralized it covers the scales as well as the cranial bones and fin rays in some non teleost fishes it is not only over the body it is also found near to the cranial bones and in non teleost fishes even it is covering the fin rays uh, like non teleost fishes means like uh, gars bichirs coelacanth etc okay and ganoid scales the characteristic features what is the important feature of the ganoid scale yes ganoin is an ancient feature of ray finned fishes for example the scales of the stem group actinopterygii or actinopterygian fish called as chirolepis so in the chirolepis fish you can see the ganoid type of scales and the ganoid scales are considered as synapomorphic character so what is this synapomorphic character synapomorphic characters are very very unique to the ancestral character the ancestral organisms possess a type of character and that will be descendant to the generations in a monophyletic way that we normally term as synapomorphic character of ray finned fishes so what what is the ancestor ancestor is the ray finned fishes and ganoin or ganoin like tissues or also found on the extinct acanthodi even in the acanthodi fishes they are present and it has been suggested that ganoin is homologous to the tooth enamel ganoin is homologous to the tooth enamel in vertebrates or even considered as a type of enamel so this is the structure of ganoid scales in lepidosteus fishes and uh, it, it is the type of uh, ganoid scales found in the palsnoid group of fishes so they have the denticle here they have the epidermis here they have the ganoin layer isopodein is there reduced cosmoin is there so these are the important things it is found in the ganoid type of scales and next we move on to the bony ridge scale what is this bony ridge scale we said there are two different types of scales are there along with the different types of scales two things are very very important and that comes under the category called as bony ridge scale and they are the cycloid and tenoid type of scales so what is this bony ridge it characterizes the bony fishes osteichthyes chondrichthyes means cartilaginous fishes and osteichthyes means bony fishes so this type of scales are very very unique to the osteichthyes fishes bony ridge scales are thin and semi transparent because why they are semi transparent because they do not possess the dense enamel and the dentinal layers that are found in other types of scales we said that uh, they are very glassy they are transparent because of the mineral substances or the cosmoin ganoin and other types of substances that substances are absent in this kind of scales so that is the two types of scales cycloid and tenoid scales the outer surface of these scales possess bony ridges that alternate with groove like depressions they will be having a groove like depression there these organisms or the scales the organism which possesses this type of scales have bony ridges and that is going to alternate with the groove like depression the ridges are arranged in the form of concentric rings how they are arranged they are arranged in the concentric ring okay Yes, the inner part of the scale is composed of fibrous connective tissues. There, it is formed of, or it is supplied with blood vessels, and here it is completely composed of fibrous connective tissue. The central zone of the scale is differentiated properly and is known as the focus of the scale. So, during the development, what happens is the focus appears first in the scale and lies in the central position. and then the growth of the scale takes place in the anterior or posterior part 
and it causes the shifting of the focus either to the anterior region or to the posterior region respectively later we said that groove is there so in the initial thing initial discussion we said that it has a, the bony ridges will be alternating with a groove like depression so what happens here is when the focus is shifting towards the uh, anterior or posterior region the grooves radiate from the focus towards the margin of the scales so how they are getting changed understood yes and this is the structure of the cycloid scale so you can see the structure of cycloid scale here which gives a concentric ring like structure and it has a exposed part annular is there annular is nothing but the circular form of arrangement first second third annular are there and this is the posterior margin see you can see the patches here dark patches which are called as the chromatophore which is attached in the skin of the uh, scales or fishes which gives the color to the fishes and the bony ridge can you able to see the bony ridge in the circular form yes this is the anterior region and this part we call as the focus this is the focus and from the focus the ridges are there and next comes the marginal groove groove is also found so cycloid means circular in form that is the understanding cycloid scales have a smooth structure and are uniform with the smooth outer edge or margin they are very very smooth in nature okay they are most common on fish with soft fin rays such as salmon and the carps carp is common carp uh, cyprinus scarpio cyprinus scarpio is the official name for the carps and this is the structure this structure shows the overlapping pattern how the scales are embedded in the uh, dermal region of the fishes and they are overlapping and next comes the tenoid scales tenoid scales are very very important one in the bony fishes like cycloid scales except they have small teeth a teeth like structure or a comb like structure will be there in the tenoid scales which we normally called as spinules or the spinules are also called as teeny it is called as teeny because of that only the scales are termed as tenoid scales along with their outer or posterior edges hence they are called as toothed scales so here in the image you can see the structure can you able to see so this is the thing which shows the ridges or the teeny or comb like structure in the margin of the scales because of this presence of the teeny the scales have a rough texture that only gives the rough texture to the scales and this scales contain almost no bone and it is being composed entirely of hydroxyapatite and the calcium carbonate substance and the inner deeper layer is mostly composed of a protein called as collagen and the enamel of the other scale types are very very superficial ridges and the teeny and mostly the tenoid scales are found on the fishes with the spiny fins not ray finned here it is spiny spiny fin rays such as the perch or perch like fishes see this is the structure of the tenoid scales you can see the teeny or teeth like structure what they because of this only it is called as tenoid scales and here the focus is there and from the focus it moves towards the groove marginal groove or the uh, ready bony ridges are there see the beautiful structure how the teeth like structure or the teeny is arranged and this ridges giving the rough structure to the scales and uh, finally we came to the significance why we learn about the scales what is the importance in learning the significance of the scales yes they play a major role or significant role in the classification hence they are very very useful for the ichthyologist the one who study about the fishes they are not found in the lampreys and hagfishes scales are completely absent in lampreys and hagfishes and these two fishes are very very primitive type of fishes which falls under the group called as agnathans a means absent gnatha means jaws so jawless fishes and the phylogeny of fishes are better understood by means of the scales so without scales we cannot understand the phylogeny from where the fish started to originate 
sharks are characterized by the presence of placoid scales and the primitive bony fishes possess ganoid scales and uh, even to an extent they possess the cosmoid scales and then the higher bony fishes what we uh, determine as osteichthyes called uh, or they possess the tenoid or cycloid type of scales the scales count is highly important in the taxonomy the number of scales present uh, in the lateral line along the along and the round around the body is specific in every species the scales the number of scales are very very unique to every species the age of the fish can also be determined by measuring the space in the annual rings so when i said about the cycloid scales i said annual annually uh, rings are there first annually second annually third annually so we can determine the age of fishes the space between first annually and second annually how many space is there how many uh, annually or formed depending on that we can determine the age of fishes and in some species like atlantic salmon the scales exhibit the presence of spawning marks what is spawning laying eggs how many times the uh, species has laid the eggs they have underwent the spawning so these marks indicate how many times the fish has spawned and the next time of spawning also so we can identify okay this much duration they have taken so either they are going to near the spawning or in near future near past only they have laid their eggs in that sense they can do the research so this is the picture which shows the spawning or the marks in the spawning marks in the Uh, scales of the fishes see this is sw denotes the spawning first sw is first spawning and second one is second spawning and this is the uh, salmon fish and this is caught in the september month which shows that they have underwent the spawning two times they have underwent the spawning so thank you for your patient listening and i duly acknowledge the various images and informations taken taken from different um, authors and google search engine i have taken and these informations are taken only for the better understanding of the students once again i thank and acknowledge the same